guys good evening it is your earth master here with an update video on this uh, saturday evening it is 12 11 2021 december 11 2021 of course 6 26 p.m california time and we got the latest earthquake on the globe which by the way i have switched over to the emsc last 50 kind of testing this out seeing how it works uh for now is a 2.6 out there on the big island let's go ahead and check out what's going on around the globe here with the latest information here i will verify everything of course through the usgs i've used them for many years they're just pretty slow recently as far as getting notifications out so i'm going to uh, switch over the uh, earthquake 3d live stream globe to the emsc data just fyi uh, 3.8 earthquake over here in Kansas. This region right here has seen a pretty good swarm of movement over the past seven days or so, uh, including a, I believe they had a four pointer up here, 4.3 earthquake within this region within the last week. Today, 3.8, roughly about the same kilometer distance uh, below the surface for that 3.8 as we've seen throughout the week with these earthquakes. Uh, this earthquake right here was felt uh, over Let's see how many people reported this here. Looks like a few folks around the region of uh, uh, Gibson, Kansas reported filling this earthquake. Uh, Selena looks to be the most response time from the folks there in Kansas. Uh, just some light shaking out there in the uh, beautiful state of Kansas. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Uh, further down south into Oklahoma, northern, looks like northwest ended. And uh, Stillwater area, a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up around there. Uh, Texas did have a little bit of earthquake activity ramp up as well, including a 4.1. We have noticed a sizable increase in the magnitudes here over the last 24 hour period, kind of ramping up in this region. Uh, so, kind of watching this whole area, uh, New Madrid zone, pretty quiet, only a 1.8 in Wrigley, Tennessee. They had some severe weather out there last night, pretty, uh, pretty scary stuff indeed uh, up into the pacific northwest around the mount rainier area some microquakes kicking off and of course uh, some activity in the northern california if you notice a lot of activity here has died off the oregon coast it has completely stopped let's go ahead and check out the trimmer activity and i'm pretty certain well look at that zero i'm pretty certain it's been updated uh, but i've noticed over the past couple nights we've seen a uh, a major increase in the southern part of the Cascadia with tremor activity uh, and that contributed to the to the uh, declining amount of, of earthquakes off the coast of Oregon Bunko fracture zone where we've been seeing that swarm uh, seems like as soon as that swarm kicked off we lost the earthquake activity off here uh, off on the uh, Blanco fracture zone but tonight no tremor so it, uh, I'm kind of curious to see if we're going to kick start the earthquake swarm off the coast of Oregon again we will be watching that pretty closely a little bit of movement southwest of Eureka with a 2.1 18 kilometers deep for a subduction zone earthquake uh, at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone uh, a little bit of movement around the Redding area as well we did see this earthquake right here as well it's pretty pretty important to pay attention to uh, earthquakes that we don't normally see like such as this one near Fort Bragg 1.9 pretty shallow earthquake here um, off the uh, yeah, it looks like it's right on the coastline north of Fort Bragg probably around McCarricker Park beautiful area as well uh, let's see down south here things are kind of kind of hit and miss a little bit of activity scattered throughout Nevada um, the Ridgecrest area while I'm on this topic here I got a comment uh, someone asking me about why are there so many microquakes around the uh, Mina, Nevada, Tonopah area. Uh, the re the reason, and also up here in the north into Idaho around the Sawtooth Fault area. If you look at the last seven days of uh, activity, let's go yeah, let's go all magnitudes so you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, up here through the Sawtooth Fault area of Idaho, and of course down through the uh, Tonopah area and the Ridgecrest area. They all share a similar um, view as to why they are getting so many earthquakes right these are all aftershock sequences not only in the ridge ridgecrest area from the uh, july 4th july 5th sequence of earthquakes there when they had that seven pointer and 6.9 uh, but also the nevada area where they seen that six pointer and also up here in idaho where they had a i believe it was 6.0 6.2 uh, somewhere up there around that sixth level 
earthquakes can, uh, aftershock sequences can occur for many years. And it was, uh, I believe it was earlier this year or maybe last year when they had that six pointer. So that's a reason for the earthquake sequences going on in these two specific areas. Uh, hopefully I answered your question there uh, properly there on that uh, comment. They were just kind of wondering about that. Can't remember the name, but uh, there you go. Earthquakes uh, definitely have a way of creating that aftershock activity for years to come. It, Ridgecrest, it's been over two years and uh, they still see some activities dying down a little bit, uh, but they're still seeing activity on any given day. Uh, let's see down south here, no swarming, a little bit of movement along the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault area. 2.3 looks to be the largest in that little sequence of quakes. Uh, we did see a little bit of movement around the Gulf of California once again with a 4.2 kind of watching this here for uh, some uptick if this starts to uh, really ramp up potential for the uh, earthquake swarm uh, will return to our north some activity around the Puerto Rico area as well with one right smack dab 4.3 happening earlier right smack dab on the Puerto Rico trench some microquakes and some other earthquakes north of the Puerto Rico area a little heightened movement around the Puerto Rico trench watching that pretty closely as well uh, South America 5.7 that's from earlier today, and of course this, er this uh, earthquake here in the South Sandwich Islands region, pretty deep, 102 kilometers for that uh, earthquake there into the subduction zone. Uh, movement on the Big Island southeast flank area, uh, looking pretty active over the last hours, but uh, not as active as we could see on, on your typical day. Looks like about uh, oh, 18 earthquakes or so. Normally this is pretty flooded with a pretty large magnet or a multitude of quakes tonight over the last 24 hours not so much movement north of uh, Kilauea or around the Kilauea volcano as well with some uh, recent surface lava appearing also down here around the Lohi Sea Mount 2.7 that went pretty deep underneath the ocean floor at 27 uh, 20.9 kilometers let's see what we got here in the uh, Gulf of Alaska we are seeing a little bit of movement around the uh, Subduction zone, Pacific North American plate interaction there. These are pretty shallow earthquakes, uh, 2.9 at 1.5 kilometers. Some movement up into the north as well. Overall, uh, general activity kind of diminishing up here in the north part of the Alaska region. Notice over here, things have disappeared off the map when it comes to Davidoff volcano, but we're still kind of watching that uh, for continued uptick. We will keep an eye on that. Um, overall things are kind of dwindling down around this region of the plate uh, as far as the Pacific plate goes but over here along the east and South America things kind of kicking up here uh, over the last hour more specifically uh, 4.5 around the western Indian Arctic uh, Antarctic Ridge as well also some movement around Iran Pakistan and Afghanistan area all seeing uh, a little bit of earthquake activity this one here 210 kilometer deep 4.1 that's pretty uh, pretty deep but is in a region where we see quite a bit of deep earthquake activity Mediterranean all quiet the Canary Islands pretty active um, we will see that on the globe earthquake 3d globe which is now on the stream I just kind of I kind of got to watch it here because I noticed the globe went down to only a handful of quakes when technically it's supposed to show the last 50 earthquakes uh, from the EMSC model so I'm kind of watching that to see uh, if there's a bug or whatnot going on with the uh, earthquake 3d globe so i will be keeping an eye on it no doubt folks uh what do we got so no trimmer uh, i don't believe we see any swarming going on at yellowstone national park everything's pretty quiet around the super volcano there's not a whole lot going on in the sun either uh, in fact solar weather activity remains very low with only a one percent chance of a sea flare that's um pretty much unheard of uh, no sunspot activity whatsoever coronal holes not, nothing even a I uh, really worry about here nothing really facing us nothing significant potential may exist here with some uh, far side sunspots we'll see in the coming days if that does amp up or not uh, but other than that things kind of uh, just uh, you know just kind of waiting kind of waiting to see what's going on here with the deeper movement South Sandwich Trench here you gotta look at you gotta, when, you, when it comes to figuring out potential earthquake activity the way I see it um, the key is those deep earthquakes. Uh, we've seen a lot of deep earthquake activity around the South Sandwich Trench here um, earlier. 
uh, prior to the uh, in prior to the swarming. Actually, no, it was around the time the uh, earthquake swarming off the Oregon coast was about ready to end, uh, which was uh, yeah, late last night. We've seen that deeper movement down south here, deeper movement and uh, pretty good surface quaking over here to the west. I think Tipper early put a Band-Aid over here along the western part of the Pacific or the eastern part of the Pacific Plate, west coast region, which includes the Cascadia, the Blanco Fracture Zone as well. Um, a lot of people like to separate this from the Cascadia to probably uh, create uh, some some soft feelings of comfort uh, when it comes to uh, you know not scaring people when it comes to the Cascadia. But uh, a lot of people and and I don't fear monger, but I kind of put out the facts I put out facts and when I see them I throw them out here on this channel not to fear monger but to inform and to make sure people are aware of what's going on out here along the coast uh, which is very close to the Cascadian te tectonic term terms uh, geology terms earth earth terms I mean it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how close these two are related and the relation of earthquake movement along the Blanco fracture zone and the Cascadia all this interaction contributes to stress along the Cascadia subduction zone. Even though these are two different names, uh, don't let that fool you. But right now, earthquake activity is calm uh, for the most part. But if we see this activity ramp up in the Gulf, I expect to see further movement up here to the north of that region. Um, so we're, we're uh, keeping an eye on it for sure. Uh, what else we got here, folks? I think that's about it. As I said, the um, activity on the Earthquake 3D Glow, which is now spinning backwards. Go ahead and see if I can fix that real quick here. Is now EMSC, the last 50, but I don't know if I want to keep that. And the reason why is because... Say for example, if you got if there's a swarm and there's a pretty uh, there's a pretty good swarm around Hawaii and whatnot. Say if there's 50 earthquakes in Hawaii, the only activity shown up here on the globe is going to be those 50 earthquakes in Hawaii. So it's not really necessarily the best feed to use uh, when it comes to the EMSC model. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to end this update video. We'll probably switch this back over to the USGS just because of that uh, defect and uh, we'll go from there. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.